Repurposing content is pretty awesome and it saves you time, right? So if I'm writing a blog, I can also create a section of that or even a sentence into a social media post or a story or advertisement, right? So if you say when you first start off and you are sending out your proposals, different components in your proposals could go into a social media post, right? That way you don't have to recreate it. So if you have your price page on your proposal, if you have your services on your proposal, you can always turn that particular um, page into a social media post and then you can hit all of your audience all of your audiences on all of your platforms and informing them as to what you do. The, your portfolio, the services that you have on there, and most people that have portfolios or choose to create a portfolio to send to um, potential leads in the beginning, have testimonials already on there. So there's your credibility. You could grab those, I did it. <laughs> I had testimonials from when I was in corporate America of some of my old managers that I reached out to them. I'm like, look, I'm starting a business. Um, you all worked with me and I was an executive assistant. So it kind of, and I turned those skills into my VA business. So even though they gave me testimonials, it still aligned with what I was about to do, right? Or what I was doing at the time. So. I took those testimonials and I put them on Instagram before I even knew how to do um, posts or even fell more in love with Twitter. I had credibility. It was a little shocking, but it worked. So I would personally start there as you are creating your portfolio, make sure you're creating it that you can repurpose whatever content or whatever information that you already have in it. It is a great start because if you have a three to five page portfolio, you got five posts right there. That's a week. Anything that you are suggesting or teaching to anyone, you have a link that you can go ahead and put on any of your other social media platforms. If you do have clients, and you have testimonials, that is a great opportunity for you to show your expertise in what you are doing. You can post it on your um, website. Anything that you create, you can manipulate it or tweak it into something else. That way you don't have to continue to work so hard. And even when you're repurposing your content, you come up with so many other ideas, right? So even though I write blogs and newsletters. I can also turn those into workbooks, as well as books, as well as journals. So that was three different other avenues I could repurpose my content to bring in more income into my business or give more awareness or even create a freebie. I have to admit, when I started making content, which really was this year, because I think the first year I pretty much focused on, you know, just being a virtual assistant. I will say that um, I do think people should make content. Content is really the new product. <laughs> So it becomes just easier to sell and not just sell yourself for services, but just to um, sell your expertise, so forth, even if you want to say that. But it does take a lot of time. And if you are a person who is a perfectionist or you want things a certain way, oh my gosh. I mean, to me, that is... I'm going to just say I feel like it's a little bit more work than actually the virtual assistant part. But is it so worth it? It is. Because then you have something set up that you can either sell as a course, you can um, sell as a mini workshop. I mean, you do. But it, I mean, you can bundle stuff up and you can make some really decent profit off of it. So it's definitely worth it. So I don't want to sound like that. But, you know, um, people do trip me out <laughs> because, you know, I think part of our job is to make it sound like I can do it, you can too. And that part is very true. But it's not necessarily... Um, 
as easy as I think some people try to make it sound. And I'm not the person who's going to want to make it sound like, oh, well, hey, you wake up one day, you come up with an idea, do a Zoom call, record it, and then resell it for, I think this morning I heard someone saying, 150 bucks, and then if you get 10 people, that's $1,500 in one hour. All of that is very true. It's very true. But you're going to have to market. You're going to have to warm up the audience. You're going to have to, you know, it's more than just, I woke up, I threw this out there. And don't get me wrong, maybe for some people, you know, that's an exception to the rule. It will happen and just fall in place like that. But it's a job. (laughs) So I want to make sure that people who at least follow me know the truth. (laughs) That yes, you can definitely have you a nice little webinar. Just teach whatever it is. And then if you just want to teach and talk, I mean, that's fine. But, you know, people have short uh, attention spans these days. People are visual learners, so you really should, in my opinion, have something visually that they can look at, too. Some of the best webinars I have been to, they're interactive. So maybe you have a workbook with that. Maybe you have some some music that they can listen to if there's a, a dead silence time. All of that stuff. That takes work. <laughs> it takes work, people. So... All I'm saying is, yes, you can just wake up with a great idea and you can throw it out there. But please be ready to put the work and the effort behind it. Um, I'm a person that I like to take my little baby steps, get myself steady, take a few more steps, get myself steady. So I would say after you feel like you've really gotten the hang of being a virtual assistant, you kind of got, um, you know, and it doesn't have to be you know, six figures or anything. You just got the hang of what you're doing um, and it's flowing nicely. Definitely start working on content um, because that could just be the difference. If you're still looking for clients, maybe you just need to put something up there for sale and have that bad boy out there on almost autopilot and and let people just buy stuff from you and not necessarily um, a service. So... Keep those things in mind. Make sure that you are, you know, recording what you do. You're thinking outside the box. And yes, you can repurpose it. So if you don't like social media, you can use it um, in several different ways and have some wonderful outcomes.